Okay, so did you remember what CASP was? Mm? No. Yes. No. no, it's an assessment. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Yeah, you're right. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> no, I mean, this at least. Part of, I mean, it used to be nowadays. Assessment or put in structure prediction. I mean, th there is one funny part, but this it, it, is kind of the that it changed somehow the dynamics of science. Like you have to do something with a very strict timeline. You can't th think of that, and it has been used as a concept in many other fields also for the machine learning or for uh, gene predictions and uh, text mining and so it, the, the whole. And I think it's actually been quite useful in many of these fields just to show that uh, mature the progress and uh, so I, I think I'm pretty sure it was the first at least in, at least in bioscience that did this so, like, so all, all haven't survived and there is something with function prediction that is going now and then it's, it's sometimes a bit hard to organize because you need to have you need to somehow define the goals very clearly and it's not always that easy so, I, mean, I know they had function predictions and how do you define the function of a protein in a very well? What is actually what you, you should predict? And it's they, they, they did something, but it's not it's not so easy. Okay. Uh, so did you remember the word threading? My target sequence in threading. So what was the idea here compared to just doing a sequence alignment? You take a known structure and kind of work your sequence into it to compare it. And uh, how, how do you calculate what is the best way to work your way through it <laughs> or through your Calculate a score or energy. So basically, of course, if a, what is a score or energy? Yeah, I mean, just as we have the uh, pairwise core matrices in like mine, we have here structurally based, so we have frequencies of amino acids in different structural positions, like groups exposed or buried or whatever. Yeah, so this is basically one, yeah. So one of the matters was basically on that, it was a 3D, 1D profile. Basically, you calculate some kind of description of the environment here and calculate how likely is it to have that amino acid there. And in this case, it depends on secondary star structure and the barrenness. The alternative method is somehow often based on some kind of pair potentials. So, what, what is in contact with what? And what, what, what was the problem with doing that from a computational point of view? Well, the calculation doesn't take such a long time because it's um, well, not, not. But the problem is, of course, that is that actually we cannot use dynamic programming if you want to solve it because whatever is in here depends what is over there. For the sequence, you don't know that before you have found what's over there. So, you, so basically, I think it's been proven that this is an empty, complete problem if you want to find guaranteed to find optimal one. There are some heuristic methods that sort of work, but it's yeah, it, it takes a long time. So it's computationally much more complicated. Then, of course, there are a lot of things like if you really would like to do it correctly, of course, you cannot say, yes, yeah, I found these two amino acids. You would, you would like to rebuild the side chains and optimize things that. And that's what we talked about today. But, and that is, of course, then it gets even more complicated. Because it's not whatever is over here, it's also in which confirmation it is. Of course, that confirmation depends on what you have here, and what you have there, and what you have there, and everything is depending on different positions. And also the another <coughs> problem is also that structures are exactly the same, it is slight variation. So. so we'll talk about that to see if we get to that today. But it's, uh, it's in principle, yeah. I mean, they are, but, but these type of things worked quite well in the mid 90s. Until basically, well, before cyber, it was clearly better than anything else. And even until you started doing good proof of proof alignments, you really these methods were often better than the best sequence-based methods. 
So we talked we talk a bit about profile profile and also I think. Which in principle is not that complicated. It's just the only, only complication is how do we score the alignment of two profiles to each other. Uh, and ideally in a rapid way. Of course, ideally you could just take you have, you have every sequence, you can calculate every substitution, every pair of substitutions. And that's a lot of substitutions. But there are people try a little bit of different things, and it's, but uh, the, you can optimize that. I think actually, next slide was show, that I showed. He actually used a number of different methods for scoring here in this case. So you see the green line here is Cyblast. And all of these are different, just uh, the same method, same profile, profile alignment method, but it's just different scoring functions. And in this case, the red one was, seems to be better than others. This was prop scores, so that, that's basically a substitution matrix for every pair, I think, if I remember correctly. So there are, and we also saw that it gave some improvement, and even for closed homologs and for remote homologs, and what well, yeah, I don't know. But the very very remote non homologs but you can and you can also do the sa exactly the same thing basically with hidden market models you can use you can hit the market models alignments basically matching the some kind of score matching the match stage to each other so that you can do it together so that it is it, basically the same thing So today there are at least two pretty good methods for doing this that we haven't talked about. One is called Jackhammer, which is part of the hammer package. That is a bit like Cyblast, but it actually includes proof of proof alignments also. And the another one is HS Blitz, which is fast methods from the HS Align package, or HS Suite package is called. Which is doing also fast alignment and uh, doing iterative search, a bit like Cyblast, but also using that. And then you find, if you do this, you find about often twice as many hits as you do with Cyblast in about the same time time. So they are generally clearly better. With DT in there? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Must be, uh, must be D, must be delete in G? I don't know what it will be in this translation. As a gap, I guess. Yeah. So, so you have the leads to some kind of gap. Because here you only have, uh, I mean, this, you have an alignment. Uh, well, you have this one doesn't have this one. So you want to have alignment of this. So you have match states to each other, and the match to insert state and the insert to match state. Because the, this the lead state of course doesn't really emit any. So basically, here when you do an alignment of single sequence of this one in the match states, you have a certain from probability for each amino acid to be emitted and then in search states also. So in search states you put in more, it means that you, your, your sequence is longer in your HMM, so you need to put this also. That, that is just the background frequency of all amino acids, I guess, in, in most cases. But in the least case, case of course, you don't emit one amino acid because you basically want to skip one, one state in the hidden marking model because your hidden marking model is longer than your sequence. And uh, so I guess you don't have a and I guess we, you can align this D to a gap somehow, so I guess we can go from... Here you match this one to this one, this one to this one, and then you do a match, to, here you match this to an insert state here, and you match to match state there again, and here it's been 4 and 5 there, you somehow jump from this one, this path from here I guess. But in this one you go here, so basically yeah, it's a... In this one you can actually somehow jump a state here. So you have D here and you have to have uh, and this is yeah, so this is this delete state is aligned somehow to a gap in this one here. Yeah, so yeah, and it's a way to make a gap in the in the profiles or in the hidden model models. And you can do the one or the other. And uh, yeah. I don't remember exactly where this comes from. Mm. Okay, anything else we we'll talked about? Uh, we talked about. Not maybe. 
we will talk we will talk more about structure prediction now. Mm, yes. Talk a bit about benchmarking for the difference mm. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Mm. And we, yeah, this is a bit about benchmark. We talk a bit about uh, this consensus predictions. Basically, there was something that we developed about ten years ago. That basically the idea is that if you actually have many different methods, if they all agree, you're most likely, or if the majority, if the majority, you're most likely correct by selecting that one. And that is something actually that's been keep kept on in many fields. Like if you really have, a, we'll talk about it today also. If you really have a if you, with different starting conditions or different parameters, you get the same answer. That is a good indication that that answer is probably correct. So it's a majority vote. And in this case, we developed it, and it still actually holds quite well. Maybe not as strong as it used to be, but it used to be good. <coughs>